Even after the death of William Douglas, 8th Earl of Douglas, the Black Douglases of Threve continued to cause problems for James II, and eventually he decided to put an end to them. So he brought an army to Galloway and laid siege to Threve Castle. The Douglases, feeling pretty safe behind the eight foot or two and a half metre thick walls, continued to live life largely as normal, and the siege drew out for a month. They surely couldn't see how the king could touch them in their island fortress. Now, I'm once again put in mind of Game of Thrones because it was at this point that James brought out his secret weapon, his dragon, if you like, Mons Meg. Mons Meg resides now at Edinburgh Castle and if you have seen it, you can surely imagine the gulf in military power it created between the Douglases, convinced of their safety, and the king, who knew fine well just how much devastation his most beloved toy could wreak. And make no mistake about it, Mons Meg really was beloved to James. He was obsessed with cannons, and Mons Meg was the largest and most powerful of the cannons he owned. Mons Meg was constructed on the orders of the Duke of Burgundy and gifted to James. It got its name because it was first fired at Mons. That's not how the story of Meg's construction goes, according to local legend here in Galloway, though. No. In fact, according to Galloway lore, it was constructed by a blacksmith in Kirkubri out of iron collected through donations from the people of the town as an act of collective vengeance for the McClellan, the tutor of Bombay, that William Douglas had executed outside Threve Castle. Now, legend continues, the granite cannon balls were quarried from the Benin on the banks of Loch Ken. Now, if you've seen Mons Meg, then you know a child can climb inside its barrel. There's even a photo on Wikipedia with a Boy Scout grinning from inside of it. Imagine seeing a cannonball that big rolling down the steep sides of the Benin. A month into the siege, and the fair maid of Galloway, married twice to her Douglas cousins, is sitting down to dinner inside Threve. Outside, Mons Meg is being rolled to the top of a nearby hill called Knock Cannon afterwards. It fires its first shot to get its range. Inside Threve, confident still in its thick walls, Lady Douglas raises her glass to drink. Mons Meg fires again. The cannonball bursts through those eight foot thick walls into the dining room. The noise must have been terrifying as the stone walls shattered and exploded. It all probably happened too fast for Lady Douglas to react, and if the story is to be believed, the cannonball screams across the dining room towards her and takes off the hand she has been raising with her glass in it to drink from. The Douglases are thrown into complete disarray and surrender to James. Their lands and property are forfeit to the Crown, cementing the stewardry of Kirkubri as a county. James was surely relieved to be rid of the Douglases and quite pleased at the power of Mons Meg too. After all, who else would risk its wrath now? James was to pay the price for his obsession with cannons at the siege of Roxburgh Castle in 1480 though, when one of the cannons he was using exploded, killing him not quite instantly.